Hi, welcome to the seventh tutorial on pagination. Let's start by seeding to the right directory. And getting our dependencies. Now that we've done that, let's open this up in our code editor. So if we open up index.js, we can see that some new routes have been added in. So whereas before this root path just went straight to Pokedex, we now have this redirect that goes to 1. And we also have this page variable, and that also defers back to Pokedex. So let's have a look at Pokedex to see what's changed. Scrolling to the top, we can see that we have these new convenience functions. Next page, previous page, is first page, and is last page. Next page and previous page just replace the router with this new value inside, which takes the current page we're on and adds 1 if we want the next page, or in the case of previous page, subtracts one from the current page. Is first page just gives us one because that's always going to be the first page, and is last page does some calculations that determines what the last page is going to be. In this case, we take the complete number of Pokemon we own, and if this is less than or equal to the current page we're on times the number of Pokemon per page, then we know we're on the last page. Note that this is a constant Pokemons per page, and it's defined up here to be three. We're going to use this later on. So Apollo does different types of pagination, but in this tutorial we're going to have a look at offset-based pagination. You can learn more about this in the Apollo docs. There's a link in the tutorial page for that. So notice that in last page we're using this underscore own Pokemon's meta field, which is a so-called meta field on the trainer node. So if we scroll down to our query, and we take this query, copy it, open up our GraphQL panel, and run this query. Making sure I replace the variable with my name. And the result is an array in the own Pokemon's field as the value with a bunch of Pokemon. And then further down, there's this own Pokemon's meta with a count of nine. Now, if I go into my data browser and I count my Pokemon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can see that that actually returns the number of Pokemon I own. Now the reason why that's a useful thing to know is because now that we're doing pagination, we're only ever going to show three Pokemon on one page. So we can click Next to show the next set of three Pokemon, or if we're already in the middle of the Pokemon, we can click Previous to see the previous three. But you can see that the data that we get isn't going to be all of the Pokemon. We won't have the guarantee that our array of Pokemon we've received has all of them in it, which is why we need to have the complete number of Pokemon. So if we go and look up into our render method, we can see in the first div where we have hey and then the name of the trainer, there are this.props.data.trainer.ownPokemons.length Pokemons. So we have to update this now because ownPokemons.length, it's no longer going to be the case. And the reason is we're going to implement pagination on own Pokemons. So we do that by putting some parentheses and defining first, which we're going to create a variable for, and defining skip, which again we're going to use another variable for. What this means is first will give us the first n number of items, and skip is skip the first n number of items. So for example, if we wanted items 3, 4, and 5, we would say, okay, well, skip the first two, and then give me the first three. So we skip the first one, the second one, and we take the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So this is how we're going to implement pagination in this case. So now that we've defined we want the first number of Pokemon, and we want to skip this many, we've got to add them into the definition of the query up here. So we have name, let's add the first variable, and define the type. In this case, it's going to be an int, and we want an exclamation mark because we have to have an int, it's not optional. Likewise with skip. Okay, and we're done for the query. Now we need to define what actually goes into these variables. So if we scroll further down, right now we have variables and we just have name inside. So now I'm just going to go ahead and copy the code. Close this. And we'll take skip. And first, and paste them in. And now what we've done is we've said, okay, well, first will just be Pokemons per page. 
because we'll always want to take three Pokemon from whichever place we are in the array. Skip is a little bit more interesting. All this is essentially doing is making a calculation based on where we are, which essentially is based on which page we're on, how many Pokemons have come before. And that's just as simple as multiplying the number of Pokemon per page by the page that we're at and accounting for the zero indexing. Okay, now that we've got the mechanics in place, all we need to do now is update our render method to reflect these changes. In other words, only display three Pokemon and give the user the ability to go backwards and forwards. So let's do that now. I'll just take the render method from down here. And indent it appropriately. And here we go. As usual, we have, if it's loading, we'll display loading. If there's an error, we'll deal with that. Here's something new. This essentially checks a bunch of conditions that need to be met before we can actually display where we are on the page. Otherwise, we'll redirect to the first page. And finally, down here, we've got, hey, this.trainer.name, Julian in this case. There are, and instead of counting how many Pokemon we have in the array, because in this case, it should hopefully always be three, we use this meta own Pokemon's meta dot count field to show how many Pokemons we have in total. Finally, down here we have this new page navigation component, which just shows the page navigation icon, and we pass in this dot previous page as the callback for the click. And because we're going back, is previous is true. Then we do what we did before, where we just map over the Pokemon that we have and pass that into the Pokemon preview component. Finally, we take the page preview component again, pass in the next page, and its previous is false, because we're going forwards this time. And just like that, we've implemented pagination. So let's see if it all runs. We'll run yarn start. And we've got this syntax unexpected token error, so I'm just going to go and copy the code from here. and replace what I've put in, which is exactly the same, but I've made a typo somewhere. And let's try running this again. So we've got hot reloading enabled, the app's now running, and if we refresh, we see the first three Pokemon, and let's click the arrow, and we have the next three, and the last three, which aren't actually any good because I haven't put the proper images in. But you can see that pagination is now working. So we've just implemented pagination and we've also seen how we can use internal props to define the variables for our query. And that concludes a set of tutorials from the Apollo client. See you in the final video where we wrap things up.